راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Praise be to Allah and may the guests peace and salutations be upon his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome back to the second hadith and the first level of the prophetic traditions The second hadith today that we're going to learn is narrated by the great companion Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله عنه He said that one day when we were with the messenger of Allah peace be upon him uh, there appeared before us a man whose clothes uh, were exceedingly white, whose hair was exceedingly black, and uh, there were no signs of journeying on him. No one among us recognized them as well. So he came and he sat before the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he rested his knees against his, and he placed his palms uh, on his own thighs. Then he said, O Muhammad, he asked the Prophet وسلم, saying, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, tell me about Islam. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Well, Islam is to testify to the oneness of Allah that none has the right to be worshipped other than Allah. And Muhammad is a Messenger of Allah to establish regular prayers, to pay the due zakah, to fast during Ramadan and to perform Hajj or pilgrimage to uh, the house, the ancient house, uh, Allah's house, which is the Kaaba. So this person said, well, you have spoken the truth. So we were amazed at him. He's asking. And then after the Prophet Sallallahu answers, he is saying, well, you've spoken the truth. Then he asked him again. Tell me about Iman. Iman means faith or belief. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Iman is to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day, and to believe in the Qadr, which is the divine preordainment and destiny. It's both good and evil. So the questioner said, well, you've spoken the truth. He said, and tell me about Ihsan. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Al-Ihsan means to worship Allah as if you can see him. And although you cannot see him, he can see you. He said, tell me about the hour. The questioner once again asked. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, well, the one who's being asked knows no better than the questioner. So he said, well, well, tell me about its signs. He said, among the signs, which would indicate that the day of judgment or the hour is near, to see the slave woman giving birth to her mistress. And you will see the barefoot, naked and destitute shepherds competing in constructing lofty buildings. Then he departed and I stayed for a while. Then he said to me, O Omar, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, O Omar, do you know who was the questioner? So I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, that was angel Gabriel, peace be upon him. He came to teach you your religion. This hadith is collected by Imam Muslim and it's a highly profound hadith. The great companion Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu is the narrator of this hadith is the second in the list of the ten heaven bound companions. And the Quran was revealed multiple times to confirm his choices and his views and suggestions. 
And the Prophet, peace be upon him, declared that Umar ibn Khattab, Allah have supported this religion with him. He accepted Islam, uh, peace be upon him, five years before the migration. And ever since he be remained very closed to the Prophet And then after the Prophet passed away, Abu Bakr became the Caliph. Then when he died, uh, Muslims swore allegiance to Umar al-Khattab to be the third caliph and the first to bear the title of Amir al-Mu'mineen or the leader of the faithful. And his Khilafat lasted for about 10 years. And during his rulership or Khilafat, Allah the Almighty granted the Ummah many victories and Islam spread widely. So amongst his achieved, uh, achievements, um, he established the Hijri calendar, it was not known before, and he set up uh, state registries. He was killed by Abu Lu'lu'a al-Majusi while he was leading the Fajr prayer. May Allah's uh, uh, peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, and may Allah be pleased with all the companions of Prophet Muhammad It is worthy of mentioning here, that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with them, both were buried with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the same room, in the same hujra. A few phrases would like to shed some light on before we give the general explanation of the hadith, such as when you read that uh, the questioner placed his hands on his thighs. That means he placed his own palms on his own thighs, not on the thighs of Prophet Muhammad. And this is a sign of showing discipline and etiquette, being well-mannered, the sitting of a student, uh, putting his own hands on his own thighs, sitting quietly, learning from the teacher. Also, when Umar ibn Khattab, the narrator of the hadith said, and we were amazed at his asking, then saying after word, after the Prophet Sallallahu answers, he says, well, you have spoken the truth. So what is the reason? Why you are asking? Unless if you already knew the answer. And obviously, shortly, you will find out that when the Prophet Sallallahu told Umar ibn Khattab, it was Angel Gabriel, he came to teach the Ummah the religion. So he was obviously aware of the questions, but he asked them out loud so that the Ummah will benefit out of that. The phrase of among the signs preceding the Day of Judgment, uh, to see the slave uh, woman giving birth to her mistress means one of two things. Number one, the widespread of battles and expeditions and accordingly, this is prior to the Day of Judgment, taking prisoners of war who would become captives and then women will be among the slave girls. And then when their masters happen to have an intimate relationship with her, she gives birth to a girl who will be obviously free and she will be following her father. So she will be like the, uh, you know, the master of her own mother. Also, some of the scholars refer to it as, you know, you know, towards the end of time, the children will be very undutiful to their parents to the extent that the girl will treat her own mother like her servant and so on. The meaning of being barefooted, naked and destitute, those people who are extremely poor and shepherd will become very rich to the extent that they will compete in constructing lofty buildings. So the three levels of faith according to the hadith you believe in uh, Islam, the five pillars, and we cover that in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. The five pillars of Islam. Then there comes a higher level. When you become Muslim, then you rise up to the next level, which is Iman. And what is Iman? To believe in Allah. And what does it mean to believe in Allah, the Almighty? It means four things. To believe that the Almighty Allah does exist. Number two, to believe in His Rububiyyah. He is the Rabb, He is the Lord, 
who created, who sustains, who maintains, who is taking care of everything that exists. Ar-Razzaq with al-Quwwat al And uh, that is referred to also as As-Samad. Everyone is depending on him. And he is only independent. He doesn't need any help from anyone. The uh, second, who said the first is to believe in his existence. The second is the rububiyya of the Almighty Allah. And we said what it means. The third is to believe in his uluhiyya. Which means that he is the only one who is worthy of worship. If he is the only creator, the only sustainer, the only one who answers our prayers, then only him is worthy of all praise. Only him is worthy of worship and we should not associate with him others in worship. The fourth uh, is the fourth level of believing in the oneness of Allah is to believe that Allah has beautiful names and attributes, uh, some of which he listed in the Quran, some of which he uh, taught to Prophet Muhammad or to the previous prophets, okay, and many others, countless other names and attributes the Almighty Allah preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with him. So we believe in whatever was listed in the Quran or taught to us by Prophet Muhammad of the names and attributes of the Almighty Allah without changing their meaning, without negating their meaning, without altering their meaning, okay, without giving it a different interpretation. We affirm to the Almighty Allah what he affirmed for himself in the Quran or on the tongue of his Prophet Muhammad To believe in all the messengers means that if a person says, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in Moses, or I believe in Muhammad, but I don't believe in Abraham or Moses, he's not a believer. In the Quran, uh, particularly in chapter number 26, Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse number 105, the Almighty Allah says about the people of Nuh, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The people of Nuh, of Nuh, peace be upon him, denied the messengers, even though they have received only one messenger, who was Nuh, peace be upon him. So if they denied one messenger, it is equivalent to denying all the prophets. Denying one of the revelations of Allah is similar to denying all the revelations of the Almighty Allah. Denying any of the attributes of Allah is simply be lying Allah and denying what Allah have described himself with. So believing also in the previous books, whether the Torah which was given to Moses, the gospel which was, which was given to Jesus peace be upon him, the Quran which had been sent down upon Prophet Muhammad وسلم, we also believe that the previous revelations have been altered and the only preserved revelation is the glorious word of the Almighty Allah in the Quran, which is the miracle of all miracles, and it will be everlasting until the day of judgment. Believing in the last day, referring to the day of resurrection, and that implies believing in the first stage of the hereafter, which is a grave, uh, which could be a means of bliss or a means of torment in the grave. Uh, we also should believe in the questioning of the grave and what will happen to the dead person in the grave according to the sound narrations in this regard. So the hadith affirms the level of ihsan, which is a higher level above iman, which is to worship Allah as though you're seeing him. But we haven't seen Allah. Have anyone seen Allah? No, not even Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. So when you worship, when you deal with people, when you treat others, you keep in mind that Allah is watching you and you feel like if you can visualize him even though you cannot see him. This is the highest level of the deen which is ihsan to worship Allah as though you're seeing him even though you cannot see him but definitely he sees you. As for the signs of the day of judgment, the Prophet Sallallahu answered because when he said, tell me about the day of judgment, when it, when is it? When is the day of judgment? When is the hour? So the Prophet ﷺ made certain his answer would not only be, no, I don't know, but to confirm. Afterward, he will tell the people that that was Angel Gabriel came to teach you religion. And guess what? Neither me nor him have any clue about the day of judgment. 
Allah the Almighty towards the end of Surah Luqman said, Inna Allah indahu ilmu sa'a. So the Almighty Allah listed certain things which are known as ilmul ghaib or the knowledge of the unseen. No one have any clue about them but the Almighty Allah. Beginning with the knowledge of when will the Day of Judgment take place. As for the signs, it has become very obvious how people who used to be Bedouins and poor and destitute, now they're building skyscrapers and even competing with building higher and more lofty buildings and so on. As every day brings us closer and closer towards the day of judgment. Obviously this hadith requires plenty of time and several sessions to explain, but we're here to scratch the surface and give you a chance to explore more and more meaning of this beautiful hadith. Till next time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I will say this, and 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 I will say this. Ya Raghiban fi kulli ilmin nafi'in Yenmu al-alm wa yataqaddam Bitaqaniyatihi wa majalatah Wa ma'ahu mutawwiru adawatina Fi taqdim al-alm al-shara'i أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان